Okay, thank everybody for being here. I want to begin by extending my deepest gratitude to our first responders and all of those who have been working around the clock to ensure our safety. Earlier today, we brought the emergency uh, Lafayette Emergency Operations Team together, which included mayors, law enforcement agencies, school officials, state representatives, volunteer agencies, and many others to discuss the response and prepare, prepare for whatever kind of recovery we may be facing. Public safety is at the forefront of all of our efforts and all of our minds. On Friday, we began monitoring this storm and quickly moved into action. Without reaching with reaching out to stakeholders, working with drainage teams to ensure detention ponds are lowered to accommodate stormwater and preparing public facilities for this storm. At 10.45 a.m. this morning, I declared a state of, emer of emergency for Lafayette Parish given the imminent threat of Tropical Storm Francine. The National Weather Service has since issued a hurricane watch for Lafayette Parish in addition to a state of emergency declaration by Governor Jeff Landry. Intensification with this system is expected over the next 12 to 24 hours with a more defined eye starting to develop as we speak. Weather officials are currently seeing 60 mile per hour sustained winds around the eye and expected arrival of tropical storm force winds Tuesday evening with the most dangerous part of the storm arriving as early as Wednesday evening. I will add the conditions are in the Gulf are as bad as we've ever seen them. We are now in the critical phase of response to this storm. Our primary focus is ensuring the safety and well-being of every re resident across Lafayette Parish. Here are a few reminders for us all over the next 24 hours. Build or restock your emergency preparedness kit, including batteries, flashlight, cash, and first aid supplies. Ensure your car is in working condition with a full tank of gas. Secure loose items around your property. Clear home drains of any leaves or debris. Ensure you have all necessary supplies, such as medications and important documents. For additional readiness tips, please visit LafayetteLA.gov and reference the LUS Hurricane Handbook. As of this afternoon, there are now four sandbag locations in Lafayette open and accessible at 400 Dugar Road, Picard Park at 130 Park Lane, Brown Park at 1234 East Pond de Mouton Road, Roby Show Center at 1919 Eros Landry Road. Please plan to bring a shovel and manpower. Bags will be provided. Should you need additional assistance bagging sand, Please make provisions to visit, visit the Roby Show Center. A full list of sandbag locations throughout the parish can be found on our, our Facebook page. We will also be sharing, I know, um, locations in the cities throughout the parish because there will be additional locations in each of the cities. While a mandatory evacu evacuation is not in place at this time, we are, if you are living within a low-lying area and or mobile homes, asking you to make provisions to get to higher ground. I will say this, it is not mandatory, but please consider your family's needs, and if you can evacuate, I would recommend you do evacuate. Additionally, given storm projections, outages are likely. It is important that those within our medically vulnerable population plan accordingly. Consider the needs of your family. Shelter preparations began last Friday with the Dupree Recreation Center selected as our primary shelter. That is at Brown Park. Offic the official, the, well, let's see. official address of this shelter location is 1212 East Pond de Mouton Road. The shelter will open tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. Materials include bedding, food, and water, and will continue to be set up at this primary location through tomorrow morning with a secondary location on standby, on standby should we need to expand our sheltering efforts. For those who are staying in place, please ensure you have enough supplies to last for several days, including food, water, and medications. Stay indoors and away from winds and avoid travel unless absolutely necessary. 
Current tra- transit routes will run as scheduled through tomorrow at 8.30 p.m., pending inclement weather. Transportation fees will also be suspended tomorrow in order to accommodate emergency efforts. For questions or concerns regarding transportation, citizens may dial 211 for more information. Our emergency services are fully operational and will continue to prioritize critical areas as the storm approaches. Anyone in an emergency should call 911. We are committed to keeping you informed with accurate and timely updates and will continue to provide updates as the situation evolves. Please follow our LCG Facebook as well as local broadcast stations for the latest information. I urge everyone to check on your neighbors, especially the elderly and those with special needs. In closing, I ask for your cooperation, your patience, and your support for one another. Let us refrain, let us remain vigilant, stay informed, and take every precaution to protect ourselves and our loved ones. I will now welcome to the podium to provide an official update first, Lafayette Parish Mark, uh, Sheriff Mark Garber. Thank you, Mayor President. Good afternoon, everyone. So, um, as far as my remarks go, and then I'll be happy to take questions, uh, I, I want to point out to everyone listening and, and viewing this that uh, law enforcement is uh, ready and prepared for this upcoming storm, uh, although we do not yet know what it will bring. I believe by this time tomorrow there will be very little speculation and a lot more knowledge about exactly what we're in for, and I look forward to speaking to you more then. Uh, law enforcement has two functions here. Number one is the law enforcement function of protecting lives and property. I've spoken to all the chiefs of police in the parish. We are all prepared to mutually support each other, and we are, we are very experienced at, at dealing with this uh, since uh, we dealt with this very scenario in 2016, potential scenario. Um, we will maintain strict enforcement of road closures. There will be zero tolerance for road closure violations. I would ask that, although I agree with the mayor to check on your neighbors, do not be the, the neighborhood jerk who goes and drives and looks around and causes wakes to go into people's houses. Be considerate of your neighbors. We have trouble with this every single time that there is a flooding event. People drive to look, and one of two things happens. They either cause wakes to go into people's houses, who may be barely holding on with their, their thin wall of sandbags, or secondly, they get disabled and then they become part of the problem and they require emergency assistance and cause damage to property, which then raises our insurance rates. So please refrain from doing that, even though I know it's overwhelmingly tempting to do so. Our second function is our rescue function. We are well equipped with a robust nationally certified search and rescue team. We have high water vehicles, we have personal watercraft, we have shallow water boats, and we have swift water rescue capabilities. We have debris clearing capabilities as well, along with the fire department. We will be there to get you or your neighbors if something happens and it is at all possible to get you. We have chainsaws, we have people who know how to use them, and we have winches. So we will be there for you. Uh, your law enforcement is ready, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, I don't know if now is the appropriate time or, or after. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, one of the comments made this morning was that we will likely have a lot of trees down, which brings down our electrical lines. So if you have trees that you can trim now, that you can prepare, please do. Um, and as well as factor, if you have a lot, if you're in a neighborhood with a lot of big trees, you will be out of power for, for a little bit of time. So just, just take all that into consideration. Next, I'll bring up Lafayette Parish School System Superintendent Francis Touchette. Thank you, Mayor President, um, Sheriff, Mayors, members of the public. Uh, just an update from the Lafayette Parish School System. As of yesterday, we started to assemble and started to get people to start looking at schools as far as securing things, making sure that by the end of the day today that things were secure. Uh, we've also stated that uh, we would be um, concluding as far as school by noon tomorrow all students in lafayette parish should be at home starting by noon tomorrow all activities will be suspended uh, we will have a complete shutdown of the entire system on wednesday and thursday 
On Thursday morning, we will assess and see where we are. We will try to get people out and look at our various schools to determine where we are as far as school for Friday. We will make a determination for school on Friday by noon on Thursday. So at this time, I would just urge that all of our families understand that they need to take care of themselves. School will be back where it needs to be when you get back. And I just want to make sure that the safety of all of our students and their families is where it needs to be as far as the storm. Thank you. And then uh, now I will bring up uh, University of Louisiana President Dr. Joseph Savoy. Thank you, Mayor President and everyone. Uh, much like the, the school system, the university would be in preparing uh, for this event over the weekend. Uh, we implemented our phase one and two. Uh, we will be closing tomorrow at uh, 3.30 p.m., remain closed all day Wednesday, and we hope to open at noon on Thursday. We have about 5,000 students, uh, residential students on campus. They will shelter in place. Uh, those who are on uh, off-campus locations, we've got their supplies being lined up, and everyone should be fine. Uh, as everyone here on the stage, we've been through this before, and we're preparing for uh, everything that we can prepare for, we feel good about it. I want to express my appreciation to the mayor president and the local mayors and sheriff and all the law enforcement officials for the cooperative nature in which uh, they've handled this event. Thank you. Thank you. And now we will open it up for questions. If there are any. Yes. <clears throat> Would we say uh, 311? 311. Yeah, 211 will give you, outside of LCG, if you want our emergency preparedness, 311, but probably 211 is better as far as the overall response. Yes. Thank you. Do you have any specific roads that you're going to close prior to the storm that you're going right now? So not at this time. Um, and he asked if we had specific roads to close prior to the storm. Right now we are barricading areas that are, are putting barricades out to be barricaded, areas that we know typically flood. I think that is the preparation we're looking at at this time. Uh, I cannot say that we don't, you know, as the water comes in, we probably will have road closures. So we'll start seeing strong winds tomorrow evening. The greatest impact is thought to come in anywhere between 8 p.m. on Wednesday, but by that time it's too late. So, so if, you, if you want to evacuate, I would move fairly quickly. It has picked up speed faster than they expected in the Gulf, and, and who knows what it does between now and then. Um, it could take another fast hop like that. So the, the, the strongest Impacts are expected, I started to say, between 8 p.m. on Wednesday and 8 a.m. on Thursday. Again, once we get to that point, it is too late to evacuate. Um, so if you're going to evacuate, I would make preparations today and get on the road early tomorrow at the latest. So at this point, what we are doing is asking family members and neighbors to identify those people. We will, 211 will be that number if, if somebody needs help. As it gets closer and as the sheriff said, we will have a much stronger idea tomorrow of what we're dealing with. Now look, we are still, you know, 28, 48 hours out and the storm could hop again. Let's keep our fingers crossed. So, but in the meantime, we are going to prepare for the very worst. So, two one one, if you need help, and we will do what we can to make accommodations uh, to get those people to safety. So, the nursing homes have their own plans in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this morning I named Christine Davies the, the interim 
<laughs> Emergency Preparedness Director. Um, she is fully qualified by all means. She has us all on our toes. She is uh, one of the greatest assets we could have today. I will say that. We may expedite the hiring process because depending on how this goes, we will need all hands on deck. And so um, we have one position approved until November 1st and then another one November 1st. So we, we may work with the council on that if, you know, if worse comes to worse to expedite the staffing of the emergency preparedness team. But yes, we are, we are in the middle of that. Yes. So we have a regular contract, uh, disaster contract that goes on. This morning we were adding extra disaster companies. Uh, through. We were going through the procurement process with them today. That's what the emergency declaration allows us to do so that we will be able to request whatever we need. Um, it, it, it will be more than one disaster contractor uh, in place ready to aid. Anything else? Well, that, that's going to be a, a decision that's going to be promulgated uh, through the OEP director uh, as far as road closures and uh, the, the, the site, uh, the website that's typically maintained is maintained by LCG. And that decision, of course, is going to be made by OEP. Uh, we, uh, law enforcement, will be enforcing it. And, uh, and that, but, but we don't make decisions unless we find a road that's flooded, obviously, and then we report that uh, so we can get the word out to everyone. So LUS Fibers, uh, the power is a combination of electrical as well as, I guess, Internet. Um, they are making preparations right now as we speak to put the, the right protections in place as well as LUS. LUS, um, in addition, has uh, out-of-state companies on standby ready to enter, I think, as soon as Wednesday or t or t Wednesday. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Um, so we will be ready to put this city back together should the worst happen. Any other questions? We do. Yes. Yes. So um, this morning there was a 10 o'clock update and uh, for elected officials, we, we sat on that call and then we gathered everybody at the EOC at, at one. We expect to do that again and to have another press co conference tomorrow afternoon. It is tentatively scheduled about the same time. Let me say that. You will be notified. But we will do daily updates as, as long as they are needed. And as of right now, um, we definitely need them this week. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Appreciate it. And over the past 20 minutes or so,